Bewitched, bothered and bewildered goes the lyric and that old melody which and it could be added to United supporters' repertoire of songs after recently watching their team twice outplay Rangers. Their manager joining Manager of the Month awards and then Calamity at Pataudry. Which United will see today against the Hearts team with European aspiration remains a major intriguing factor. Well, this is the United side which finished the game at Pataudry. David Hanna, who came on as a, a sub on Wednesday, starts again today. The United defence, which played so well at Ibrox, remains exactly the same. An Irishman, Danny Griffin, man of the match in the last two United games, will certainly be a key figure in midfield. Hart seem to be peaking at just the right time for a European bid. They're unchanged from last week when they trounced Motherwell. And of course, to complete the Northern Ireland balance, Andy Kirk, with two goals last week, hopes to add to his tally of 12 so far this season. And the referee today, in a very windy day, it is Alan Freeland. Certainly very bright and sunny, and the pitch looks to be in good nick compared to some I've seen recently. Now they kind of start there by Jason DeVos. Well, United may have uh, slipped up in midweek, but nevertheless, they've only been beaten twice in the last 12 competitive games which compared to the start they've had this season under Alex Smith they've really been a rejuvenated side playing with a, a bit more credibility and self-esteem Hearts on the other hand haven't lost here at Tanadais in the last four years this could be a great start for them well, a long time ago since United uh, beat the team in Maroon and there was an excellent little play there, but notice how the tangerine jerseys came back very quickly. Nicely floated in there, it's still in. Well, it's like a rugby scrum when the play hasn't stopped. Referee rightly waved the play on as the tackles went crunching in and anything might have happened there. Right start to this game. Villa launched that well forward. Here's Villa again, changed direction well, and that is too near the goalkeeper. Yes, I think uh, David Hanna was screaming for the ball to be played to him. Colin Cameron, there was a clash of heads. Yes, Cameron going down very heavily there. Uh, both players are in fact, and the referee always has to be very careful about these things. Well, both players, are, I think, uh, with a healthy appetite for the game early on in, in a match. Trying to go for that deep one, Thompson trying to get there, and David Hanna coming in as he uh, normally does in these situations. Remember that goal he scored against Rangers in the cup? Same sort of position, but he couldn't get any leverage that time, he had to use his head. Right through it goes now, Thompson, can he send it over? He does! except it's off the side of the foot didn't get it cleanly and they've got to take uh, opportunities like that they won't get too many like this he set off very well he was very alert saw the possibilities there but good defending they closed them down and forced them into that error Bustling into it, good move by Miller. He's nice little effort there by Miller. Just about half a pace short with the pass. I think he was going for a one-two, and it didn't quite come off.
to be played right down the line. A lot of pushing going on there. Here's a rush forward. Thompson did very well. McKenna stayed with him though. Hannah! Why think to try? Why not? You can see he took it by the outside of his right foot, favoring that option. It did swirl away from goal. Almost boomeranged it, but uh, I think it was right to have a goal. Well, that could be picked up, and it is. Boyack. Free kick right on the edge of the box. I think it may have passed through his mind that he was inside it, but he was not. And indeed, I have to say, I think they lost an opportunity there. He could have laid that ball off before that incident. Nevertheless, they get the free kick. So... Austin McCann is looking at it with his left foot here. And they signed from Airdrie. And it goes a deflection. Corner kick. Well, it, it wasn't far off the right sort of curve he was attempting. Tried to send it round the edge of the wall and they came in and covered it up well. Lily, that's a bit of honor, Charlie Miller, can he make tracks, picked up by Tomaszek, but only to Easton. There he is again, can he play it wide, I think that must be a free kick. Well, in many ways, unfortunate, because Jamie Buchan was on the loose on the left, and I think he saw him, and you could see he was maybe trying to sweep it across to him. Brought down, though, free kick. Well, Danny Griffin is, I think, going to have a go at this. He's only scored one goal for United this season. But uh, beside him, Charlie Miller, of course. He'll go for it again. That's off the post and off the line again. Easton, that's a brilliant effort there. And no wonder he's anguished about it, immaculately judged this time, swirling away from Yemi. And that certainly the highlight of this first 45 minutes, as we're right on the verge of half-time, up goes the boss. And way behind there, all ending in an anti-climax, after that blistering free kick. I mean, if we watch this again, look at the way he swings the ball away from the goalkeeper. Great judgment. Anna, go to United. Play it square, surely, and does. Lachlan, try to find Easton, and he does. He's got a bit of space, allowed to turn. Wasn't closed down quickly enough, he's going for it. And it goes, and it's the off the post. Yes, Thompson. Brilliant play as Miller came across there. In the middle of that move, after a great run by Easton, perseverance paying off, and the alertness of it, Thompson, who scored that vital goal last week at Ivers. Just Charlie Miller's part in it. Almost then, but Thompson made sure. This was a run that mattered. He wasn't closed down quickly enough. And there was Charlie Miller with the assist and in by Thompson in the right place at the right time. Well, into stoppage time by about three minutes. Alex Smith will be absolutely delighted with the way his team hung in there. They had some uh, rather poorish patches in this game. put in a lot of hard work may 
tackle trying to break the way through. It's a poor ball forward, Charlie Muller again. Antinemi telling his players to get on field, but uh, no time for that. The referee brings the first half to an end, and there's a, a jaunty little run there by Alex Smith. No wonder, goal coming at an excellent time for them. I don't want to be gratuitously writing the game off as an entertainment, but there was a lot of hard work going on, but the two items that stand out a mile are that free kick by Griffin, brilliantly taken, very hard luck, and then that run by Easton, which was at the base of the goal, ably assisted by, by Charlie Miller, who was a wee bit unfortunate not to put it in himself, and then Thompson finishing off, and it means that Hearts really have to come out and have a go in the second half. half down score, Dundee United 1, Hearts 0. That's uh, first response, of course, to what's happened in the first half, is to bring on Severin and Wales as substitutes put some effort into this uh, hard side hard side a lot of hard work in midfield but without any great uh, penetration well there's Danny Griffin um, I think he'll take it easy tonight with that eye played wide plenty of space for Buckham No Buck and Charlie Miller look for a one-two and no great effort in that by Lily. And I think Charlie Miller expected him to run and get the ball back, watch it. But instead Lily goes for it himself, but only paddles it towards the keeper. Laughlin going for it, getting it. That's a lovely ball to Miller. He's going for it again. That's a great effort by Miller. Well, he may well have opted to hit the ball here, decided to turn, and you can see falling back, he couldn't really get any purchase on it. That's a decent ball indeed. From Easton, Lily. Can he go to the goal line? He can. And they get the corner kick. Good defending all the same again by Stephen Presley, the former the Lee United player. Right into it very quickly, reading the danger. <laughs> well, they're trying to judge and run in. Straight in, I think, at both Lachlan and the boss. Not sure that they left it to each other, but they were both in there and didn't quite fall to one or the other properly. Well played by McCann, keeping his cool. And Wales down to Cameron. There's a run by Thomas Flogel. He'll just keep it in. Thompson going back with him. Boyack. That's a better ball by Boyack, and it's there! <laughs> Wales comes in at the far post, and that was an imagination. Good play on the right hand side, and this time Wales got away from the markers. Boyack. Full credit to him for the way he swerved that in. And for the first time in a the game, they've really been beaten in the air by Gary Wales. Wales coming right in there. But as I said, the man who used to play his football at the other end of uh, Canada Street coming in, swerving that across for Wales to do the needful. Thompson. 
There's a lovely little touch to Johnny Miller. Can he get it there? It's a penalty kick. Miller, brilliant little run into the box, and Yemi committed himself. And the Hearts players complaining about that. Well, well, you know, Yemi had to go for the ball. Did he also deliberately obstruct? Now, what's going to happen to the goalkeeper because, you know, a red card can be produced at uh, times like these. And he gets a yellow card. He is still a little bit dumbstruck. Now, watch the challenge. The goalkeeper coming out there. Now, the I don't know about that. I think Yemi had, had to go for the ball. And he, in fact, I think he's turning away from the player. I put that down as a harsh decision by the referee. In any case, Charlie Miller's not going to bother. It's a great little run by him. Now, can he finish it off from the spot? Oh, the, the keeper deserves that, I think. Well, fortune favours the brave, and that was not a very good penalty kick by Mr. Miller. And I think that uh, evens itself out. Still not cleared, and that's a free kick. So Antin Yemi at the center of one of the most controversial incidents and I think he was harshly dealt with. I think he really, as a goalkeeper, had to go for the ball there and the collision was inevitable. So I'm not sure that's construed as deliberate, or could be. Tomaszek gets away. That's a good little ball into Severin, can he fly it, goal? Well, it's got to hit them clean on that. And I think he was annoyed with himself. He knew he was well set up. The defender coming in front of him like that, of course, slightly put him off. Whatever the merits of that penalty kick, Alex Smith must have realised it was an opportunity to go ahead. That is a bad moment for him. I think we're going to have substitutions again. Benitez coming on, Charlie Miller coming off. Miller, I think, um, has given a lot to United. Uh, starting to go down the track. I don't think he's all that happy about being taken off. I know that Alex Smith might be thinking about next week as well, of course. Here, Jemmy Bucken. Good run by Bucken. Tries a shot, and there's a deflection, though. Well, suddenly he found the pace to get thus far, and then gets the deflection. Well, there's the man of the match again. With one good eye, the other one... Well, he's, I suppose you might say, in getting man of the match, he's put in a Horatio Nelson effort to do it. They're certainly keeping possession of United. Here's Bucket in one of his runs again. Well, that's been bothering that Hearts uh, flank, right flank there. And Cameron trying to settle them down with that pass. Usually brushed away by the boss. Who's round? There's no offside. Robinson going in. Can he finish it all? I think he might have been a little bit surprised that the flag didn't go up, but it was a perfectly legitimate decision. He was on site. Now, it was a very, very acute angle. Yemi did all the right things, tried to act big, block him out, and he couldn't do it. This one, Joe. 
Neatly put back. And I think uh, Easton complaining to the assistant referee. The two officials are going to confer about that little incident. A little bit of stamping going on here. As indicated by his assistant. So Alan Freeland has got to adjudicate on this. And I think he's off, yes. Tomashek ordered off. And he's not at all happy with the assistant referee. Robinson couldn't get it away now. Cameron. And there goes the final whistle. That's it. Rather sensational ending there with the sending off of Tomashek. That first goal, of course, coming up for Thompson eventually to put in after a very good run by Easton. Ably assisted, of course, by Charlie Miller and then poked in eventually by Thompson. And then after the, the D United defence had poked ably with the ball high in the air, they were caught just uh, as that ball went over the heads towards the far post and Wales getting the equaliser. Then came that penalty incident. Quite frankly, I don't think it was a penalty. And it was a bit of justice in the way that Antiniemi got down to what I have to admit was a rather poorish effort by Charlie Miller. So at the end of the day, with a little bit of controversy near the final whistle, that the United won, March one. Alex, it's an old truism in football and you've seen it at many a club. If you don't take the clear-cut chances, you don't deserve to win. Well, there's no doubt about that. There's nothing truer than that in football. And I mean, we had opportunities at vital stages of the game uh, to clinch it. Uh, the obvious one is a penalty kick, of course, but we had a couple more. We had a header in the second half uh, from Jason. We had a, ch a clear-cut chance from Robinson. And we had a big one in the first half as well. So uh, we were really disappointed from that point of view. But we've had a very hard week and uh, we're playing a very difficult side today, a team that's had a good running form as well. And uh, they started the game, I thought, uh, more positive than we did. But we came into it and I thought we, we had opportunities to win it. The sending off uh, at the end, I think the assistant referee was indicating a stamping. At least that's what we get from the, the body language he was using. Mm -hmm. And yet a yellow and a red card was shown. Now, does it still remain a, a little bit of a mystery to you? Well, what isn't a mystery is that, that Robert Tomashek assures me that he wasn't booked previously in the game. So that leads me to believe that, that, and I think you'd need to ask the referee, Mr Freeland, but it leads me to believe that, that possibly uh, the referee made a mistake and uh, it should have just been the yellow. So it wasn't just a straight red in that sense because he produced the yellow to start off with? Well, it, it, the first card he produced was a, was a yellow card. So, you know, from my point of view, it's a booker. Sports match of the day from yesterday afternoon. David Hanna, one of our studio guests, was playing in that match. Having watched the highlights, David, I think you're even more disappointed not to take three points. Yeah, I think so. Uh, if we'd have won the game yesterday, we'd have given us a six-point swing against St Mirren. And obviously, getting a point was a, it was a crucial point that we actually got. Uh, it takes us po four points clear of St Mirren, but still a bit of work to be done yet. And as Alex Smith said in the interview with Archie there, Loads of scoring chances you could have taken. Yeah, I fell after the game now. We should have at least made the goalkeeper now save, save the ball. We should have been looking to hit the target at least anyway, but I thought we deserved the three points. But you have to put the ball in the, end of the, in the net at the end of the day. Now, one or two controversial moments in this match. I'll bring Andy in in a couple of minutes on this one. What about the, the penalty instant, first of all? It's precariously balanced at 1-1. First of all, David, did, did junior teammates think it was a penalty at the time? Initially, during the game, I thought it was, but looking back on uh, the TV there, I think the goalkeeper's actually, his momentum's actually taken him right through Charlie. And it was uh, a bit of an obnoxious challenge, but uh, to be perfectly honest with you, it was a 50-50 decision that could have went either way. And you think, Andy, that he's got the ball first, and it is his momentum, as David said, that's carried him through? Yeah, Charlie's done well, he's got to the ball first, but I think the goalkeeper's made a save, and you've got to give him credit for that. I, I don't think it's a penalty at all. What about the decision? Because if the referee has decided that Niemi's the last man, 
He's denied Miller a scoring opportunity and yet he's only given him a yellow card. Yeah, it's not a rule that I like, but by the letter of the law, he should have gone because there's no one else behind him. I know Colin Cameron's racing to get back, but by definition, the goalkeeper there is the last man. So I don't understand the referee's thinking there. I'm disappointing, of course, that Charlie missed the penalty, David. Yeah, well, I think Danny Griffin wanted to hit it initially. I think after the game, speaking to Charlie himself, looking back in hindsight, he shouldn't have hit the penalty. But as I said, I think he scored three penalties out of three so far, so... Unlucky. Right, so you're going to let him off with that yeah. one. Um, the Tomashek sending off, um, it's, a, it's a tackle on Craig Easton. D did it look malicious to you at the time, David? I thought he was just being a wee bit rash. If you, you see there, I think he's been leading with his studs up. Uh, it's a bit of a rash challenge, but I don't know whether it's a red card. As uh, Craig Levine said earlier, he hadn't been booked. And I think maybe Mr Freeland maybe got his uh, wires crossed slightly. What did you make of that one, Andy? Well, I think it was a poor challenge. I think there was a bit of nastiness in it. But you see here the referee's pulling out his yellow card and, and then showing a red. So you would think that it's two bookings, which would mean, mm. you know, a red you've got to go off. And if the referee has made a mistake, you'd like to think he's big enough, you know, to come out and say, well, actually, I did make a mistake there mm. because, you know, he's going to put Robert Tomaszczuk out of, out of the team. And, you know, who knows? Who knows when he's going to get back in into it? It did seem rather baffling, didn't it? Let's have a look at the, the two goals in this match. The first one coming for Dundee United, David, and again, Charlie involved. Yeah, it was a great run with Craig Easton there, and Charlie's taking it early, hit the post, and he's all good strikers. He's on his toe, Stephen Thompson, and he tucks it away nicely. It's actually a great hit with Charlie, and it comes out, and Stephen Thompson's on his guard there and sticks in the back of the net. Thompson had to be alert, didn't he, Andy? Yeah, he did. It's not an easy chance. It looks very easy with the goal gaping there, but he still has to make good contact with it, and he's pushed it into the net well. And I'm pleased for him because it was a, a good goal. Any criticism of the United defence, David, having seen that again? Yeah, possibly I should have prevented the cross coming in myself. Uh, once he's beaten me here, you're looking for your defence to maybe clear the ball. But all credit to uh, Zagari Wells, he sticks it away very well, he gets up and he powers the header down, it's a good finish. Credit to the striker again, Andy? Yeah, credit to the striker, he's done well to get on the end. I just feel as though Jamie McCunney's there, just caught under the ball slightly, but mm -hmm. he's a young guy, I'm sure he'll learn from that experience. Now, one of the major factors in, in Dundee United's renaissance this season, I think, has been the return of Danny Griffin, hasn't it, David? He's, yeah, he's been... He's made a great impression in the last few games. He's been sensational. Uh, obviously, I think he prefers to play at the back, and he's come into the central midfield hole role, sort of a thing, as the anchor man, and he's been different class. Uh, he picked up a bad uh, eye injury, and just hopefully he'll be OK for the game on Sunday against Celtic. Was there any worry there initially when he went down? I thought it was just a case of, obviously it was an accidental uh, clash of heads, but his eye actually s uh, swollen up quite badly in the second half, but as you see from there, it's a great strike he has from the free kick and he's very unlucky it doesn't hit the back of the net there. And you'd have to say, Andy, that United need all their, all their top players for, for next week's game against Celtic at home. Yeah, absolutely. They're in uh, a good spell of form just now and I don't think it's any coincidence that their <coughs> return to some good form has... You know, being with uh, Danny Griffin getting back into the side because he is a quality player. Okay.